Hey friends, welcome if you're new, I'm Alicia. I have probably had more requests for this educational video than any other, and I've gotta be real with you. Cereal, it's one of my favorite foods. It crosses my mind all the time. When am I gonna wake up one day and just be a real adult and not want cereal anymore? Because not only do I want it all the time, I want the super sugary ones. It's probably no surprise to you that those sugary ones, they're not fuel. They provide almost no nutrition regardless of some of those health claims and whether they are organic or not. And not only are they loaded with refined sugar and often made with refined grains, they can also contain hydrogenated oils, artificial flavors, and artificial colors. Pretty much the epitome of processed foods. So why don't people make cereal at home? Because it is so processed that people don't even know how. And it would be a huge pain to go through all the work to make one measly bowl of cereal. When it comes to sugary cereals, it can be deceiving because they aren't always high in calories and are usually pretty low in fat. So while I do always recommend reading the label, you need to know what you're looking for. And here is one example where low calorie and low fat does not always equal healthier. When I look at a cereal label, I am mostly looking at the sugar content as well as, of course, the ingredients list. We've heard it before and I've said it before, long ingredients lists are not ideal. Shorter is usually better. But that isn't always the case with cereal. Most are made up of some type of grain, refined or not, and sugar, and sometimes flavor. And of course it depends on the type of grain, but for the most part, none of those ingredients are offering much fuel, especially when pitted against the amount of sugar that's included. So which are the worst choices? Now I could tell you a list of the top five or 10 worst cereals or whatever, but the truth is that would be a waste of your time and mine because those sugary ones, they're all pretty much the same. So where one isn't quite as bad in one area, it makes up for it in another. Lower calories or fat doesn't mean lower sugar, doesn't mean a cleaner ingredients list. I actually think clean cereal is an oxymoron, really, at least when it's store-bought. So instead of telling you a list of the worst, I'm gonna give you some advice on what to look for when picking out cereal to avoid the worst ones. First up, it is pretty obvious but worth discussing, limit sugar. So can you aim for less than five grams of sugar per serving? Now remember, serving sizes can trick you. Let's take a look. Honey Smacks contain 100 calories, half a gram of fat, and 15 grams of sugar in one serving. They're one of the higher ones, and a serving is noted as three quarters of a cup or 27 grams. Apple Jacks contain 100 calories, one gram of fat, and 10 grams of sugar in one serving, which is noted as one cup or 28 grams. Hmm, so let's talk about the discrepancies. The grams are almost the same because the cereals weigh about the same, but that means you get more by volume of the Apple Jacks compared to the Honey Smacks by weight. But for most of us, especially in America, it makes sense to compare the cups because we're thinking about how much of our bowl is getting filled. We're not thinking in grams. When we bump the macros of the Honey Smacks up to a one cup serving to match the Apple Jacks one cup, it contains 133 calories, less than one gram of fat, and 20 grams of sugar. So now we find that when we compare one cup of Apple Jacks to one cup of Honey Smacks, the Honey Smacks are actually double the sugar by volume. Dang! I need you to remember when I'm talking about these high amounts of sugar, this is not me saying that carbs are bad, this is me saying that we want to watch our added sugar intake. So if you have questions about sugar intake, I suggest watching my sweeteners video because I go a little bit more in depth about how sugar affects our bodies and recommended amounts and all that. So even double the sugar doesn't necessarily mean you should avoid the smacks and choose the jacks. Because look at those ingredients lists. Don't get me wrong, the honey smacks list is not ideal. Lots of sugar, refined grains, hydrogenated oils, and more, but look at that Apple Jacks list. It is important to note that the first ingredient in both of these is sugar. So that should never be the case with a healthy fuel choice because remember, the ingredients are listed in order by weight in that list. Before we move on, I wanna throw in a few more cereals to compare. Raisin Bran, it is deceiving. This is pretty much the adult kid cereal because it isn't really any better. Seems like it is, but it's not. One cup is 190 calories, one gram of fat, and 18 grams of sugar. It is almost double the calories, and you see that that sugar is high, high, high. It's true that dried fruit is naturally high in sugar, but these raisins are actually coated in extra sugar. 
It does contain 5 grams of protein and 7 grams of fiber, but the question is do those factors outweigh the extreme amount of sugar that is added? This Raisin Bran is also double the carbs and double the grams because it is heavier. It does contain some whole grains, but remember that wheat bran is not a whole grain because the bran is just one part of the grain even though it does offer nutrition. The ingredients are pretty much what all cereals are, wheat and sugar. Someone might try to argue that the whole grain wheat is fuel, but again, I don't know if it really is at the expense of the sugar. And one thing is for sure, there are a lot of foods out there that are better fuel than this. Guys, if you are surprised at this, you should see Raisin Bran Crunch. A few more to compare, some of mine and Christian's favorites, Fruity Pebbles and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Now, a lot of people look at these and think these are terrible for you, pure sugar. The one cup serving size comparison shows both of these actually have less sugar than any of the other three we've looked at. Don't judge a book by its cover. You guys, I know it sucks. I love them too. One of my favorite cereals of all time that I can't believe they just brought back is French Toast Crunch. And one of my other favorites, Golden Grams. So good. What is your favorite sugary cereal? Let me know. Back to our list of how to choose. One, limit the sugar to less than five grams. Remember that serving sizes vary, but because I know we aren't going to all walk around the stores cross multiplying to equalize the serving sizes, I am just going to use whatever is already offered on the box. Number two, have a 100% whole grain be the first ingredient. Number three, look for a shorter ingredients list. Number four, keep serving sizes in mind. Those cereals that say a half cup is a serving Come on, who eats a half cup? Number five, fiber intake should be at least three grams. If you can get it up to five grams, even better. Now, fiber in cereals has become sort of a fad. A lot of cereal brands and companies think, I can tell people this is high in fiber and they won't think it's bad for them. And a lot of people buy into it. Fiber is a good thing. It helps you feel full longer. It can help with digestion, but we need to look at where that fiber is coming from. So you wanna look for options where fiber is coming from whole grains rather than functional or added fibers like chicory root, AKA inulin, but chicory root sounds better, which is much more processed, even if it does come from a natural source and it can make people gassy. A lot of times the fiber that's added doesn't really add any nutrition because of the source, but it does allow the companies to make that fiber content number higher on the box. So it's a selling point, but you won't be fooled because you're watching this video. I personally think it's preferred to get fiber from whole food sources like fruits, veggies, and true whole grains uh, rather than a high fiber cereal. Okay, so now that we know our list sharing how to choose, I'm gonna share a few options that fit into these subjective criteria. So, disclaimer as always. You don't have to eat these. You can keep eating whatever cereal you want. I'm just sharing this information for you to take what you want and leave what you don't. My goal is to encourage you to make your own informed decisions. So take this information and put it into practice in your own life. None of the items shown in this video are sponsored and all thoughts are my own. I went through the cereal aisle in a few local grocery stores and picked out some that fit into these criteria. Now that doesn't mean that this is all of the ones that fit into this criteria, so feel free to share others that are healthier choices that you like in the comments below. First up, oh, I thought it was backwards, but the cover's on both sides. <laughs> First up, Cheerios. Now I actually got these at Trader Joe's, so they are called Joe's O's, but they are literally the exact same thing. Toasted whole grain oats cereal. So let's check out our list. Does it have less than five grams of sugar? Yes, it only has one gram of sugar. Amazing. Whole grain is the first ingredient, whole grain oats. A short ingredients list. Yes, it's very short. Serving size is one cup, which is better than those half or three quarters cup options, which are more common, unfortunately. Three grams of fiber, which is actually from whole grains. I wanna use this opportunity to talk about another deceiving cereal, multigrain Cheerios or multigrain O's in this case. So multigrain means multiple grain. It does not necessarily mean multiple whole grains. In this cereal, it is mostly whole grains, which is great, but having more types of grains doesn't necessarily make this healthier. In fact, this cereal has six grams of sugar, which isn't terrible, but it is five grams more than the regular Cheerios always read the label. And while we are on Cheerios, I wanna show you something I discovered about a year ago that's pretty cool. Power O's. They are made with beans. Say what? Actually, they are pretty good and I would have never guessed that they were made with beans. They only have two grams of sugar and bean blend is the first ingredient consisting of navy beans, lentils, and garbanzo beans. It is a super short ingredients list. The only other ingredients are brown rice and salt. Nice. It is a one cup serving size with four grams of fiber and it is worth noting the protein here is six grams, which is two to three times more than other 
other cereals, and that is because the base is beans. Pretty cool. They look like Cheerios, they taste like Cheerios. Mm, could be worth it. This is one of the few cereals I might be tempted to say actually could provide fuel. It is still processed, obviously. You don't grow these power O's on trees, but cleaner ingredients. We found clean cereal, yay! Next, Kashi Heart to Heart. Honey Toasted Oat Cereal. These are pretty much healthier Honey Nut Cheerios. They've got five grams of sugar, whole oat flour is the first ingredient, a short ingredients list, serving size is three quarters cup, which is meh, but it's 120 calories, so I guess I can spare a little bit extra. Now remember, if we were to make this a one cup serving, the sugar would technically be higher than five grams, but like I said, I'm going by the serving size that is offered. And it has four grams of fiber. Now I actually haven't tried these, but I'm sure they're good. These aren't shaped like hearts. This is supposed to be a heart. Yeah, they're okay. I could eat it. So regular Honey Nut Cheerios have nine grams of sugar. So we are cutting that in half here, and they still taste pretty good. They don't taste as sweet, but they're good. Also worth mentioning, the Power O's company also makes a Power O's honey variation, which are pretty much Honey Nut Cheerios, but even though they are made of beans, check the sugar, still nine grams. So it's the same as the regular Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> that was my cry. <laughs> <laughs> so still much cleaner ingredients, but doesn't fit the criteria for a list of healthier choices because of that sugar. Puffins are original. I've had these before and they are really good and they have other flavors and varieties, but I don't think the stats are as good as the plain original ones. Uh, so they have five grams of sugar, corn flour and whole grain oat flour are the first ingredients. It is a short ingredients list. The serving size is three quarters cup. Again, eh, but what can you do other than eat a bit more? Five grams of fiber and and this is one of the brands I found that does seem to actually try to meet the claims that it puts out there. It's not mindlessly making health claims, it is considering health in the production. That doesn't give them a pass, you still have to read the label, but from what I've observed, it seems like they're actually trying. Next up, probably my personal favorite on the list, I loved them as a kid and I still do today, Kicks. I was never a fan of the Berry Kicks, just the plain old Kicks. These only have three grams of sugar. Whole grain corn is the first ingredient, and the ingredients list is very short. The serving size is one and a quarter cup. Say what? Righteous. And that actually means that in one cup, there would be less than three grams of sugar, which is not too shabby, and it has three grams of fiber. Nice. These crispy corn puffs are just lightly sweetened, and they are so good. Fuel? Meh, but definitely not doing the damage that others are. Uncle Sam's Original Wheat Berry Flakes. Now, I have never had these, but I saw them when I was walking through the aisles, and the stats were pretty impressive. Less than one gram of sugar. I wonder if it's gonna be gross. Whole wheat kernels is the first ingredient. The whole ingredients list is literally just whole wheat kernels, whole flaxseed, salt, and barley malt. Not even vitamin E for freshness, which a lot of them have. Serving size is three quarters cup, standard, and a whopping 10 grams of fiber, but we know the fiber is 100% from whole grains because that's the entire ingredients list. So that is what I'm talking about when I say fiber coming from fuel. Is it any good? I have no idea. The texture, actually good. There's just no sugar in it. It, it is good, it is good. I mean, if there's no sugar at all, right, which you knew from the ingredients list and it tastes like it, but I th think even adding a little bit of cinnamon or something, it's a good texture. Hmm, I'm surprised. I actually like it more than those heart things. <laughs> I also found a few options that I really like but didn't quite make our nutrition list. Rice Krispies, AKA Crisp Rice from Trader Joe's. Don't mind me, I've been shopping at Trader Joe's a lot lately. This has three grams of sugar. Milled rice is the first ingredient. Remember, rice is a whole grain. It can be very processed, but it's still better than a lot of other refined grains. A short ingredients list, pretty much rice, sugar, and salt. One cup serving size, but zero grams of fiber. Bama. And Crispix. I love Crispix. Four grams of sugar, rice and milled corn are the first ingredient. It is a short ingredients list, a one cup serving size, and again, zero fiber. So my point with these is that they aren't ideal because they aren't providing fiber or additional fuel, but they also aren't doing much damage. So you have to decide what role cereal is gonna play in your life. If you are someone who just likes to have a bowl of cereal here or there and you don't wanna do damage, these could be good options. Me on the other hand, Christian and I have a cereal obsession and for that reason, 
we don't buy it. The fact that I bought all of these for this episode is dangerous because now I have to eat them. Just kidding. No, but really, I am gonna eat some Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and some French Toast Crunch, and some Golden Grahams. Notice how I didn't actually use two out of those three in the episode. I bought them because I wanted to eat them and this was a good excuse. Anyway, when I have cereal in the house, not only can I not resist it, but I cannot for the life of me have one serving. It's more like half a box. So for me, I found that just not buying it works better. Or if I'm really craving it, I'll buy a single serve portion of the cereal I want rather than trying to choose a healthier cereal. But you gotta do what works for you. If you are struggling with your relationship with food, I encourage you to check out my video on that. And if you want more educational videos, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. And feel free to check out some of these other ones that I've done. I hope you guys have found this insightful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, tag me in your cereal shots on social, and let me know your favorite type of cereal in the comments below. I'll see you next week, and remember, especially when it comes to cereal, it's all a matter of mind over munch.